The Sten, or Sten gun, was a family of British submachine guns chambered in 9x19mm and used extensively by British and Commonwealth forces throughout World War II and the Korean War. They were notable for having a simple design and very low production cost, and so also making them effective insurgency weapons for resistance groups. Sten is an acronym, from the names of the weapons chief designers, Major Reginald V. Shepard and Harold Turpin, and N for Enfield. Over 4 million Stens in various versions were made in the 1940s. History The Sten emerged while Britain was engaged in the Battle of Britain, facing invasion by Germany. The army was forced to replace weapons lost during the evacuation from Dunkirk while expanding at the same time. Prior to 1941, and even later, the British were purchasing all the Thompson submachine guns they could from the United States, but these did not meet demand. American entry into the war at the end of 1941 placed an even bigger demand on the facilities making Thompsons. In order to rapidly equip a sufficient fighting force to counter the Axis threat, the Royal Small Arms Factory, Enfield, was commissioned to produce an alternative. The credited designers were Major R. V. Shepard, OBE, Inspector of Armaments in the Ministry of Supply Design Department at the Royal Arsenal, Woolwich, later Assistant Chief Superintendent at the Armaments Design Department, and Mr. Harold John Turpin, Senior Draftsman of the Design Department of the Royal Small Arms Factory, RSAF, Enfield. Shepard had been recalled to service after having retired and spending some time at BSA. The Sten shared design features, such as its side-mounted magazine configuration, with the Royal Navy's Lanchester submachine gun, which was a copy of the German MP28. In terms of manufacture, the Lanchester was entirely different, being made of high-quality materials with pre-war fit and finish, in stark contrast to the Sten's austere execution. The Lanchester and Sten magazines were even interchangeable, though the Lanchester's magazine was longer with a 50-round capacity, compared to the Sten's 32-round capacity. The Sten used simple stamped metal components and minor welding, which required minimal machining and manufacturing. Much of the production could be performed by small workshops, with the firearms assembled at the Enfield site. Over the period of manufacture the Sten design was further simplified, the most basic model, the Mark III, could be produced from five man-hours of work. Some of the cheapest versions were made from only 47 different parts. It was distinctive for its bare appearance, just a pipe with a metal loop for a stock, and its horizontal magazine. The Mark I was a more finely finished weapon with a wooden foregrip and handle, later versions were generally more spartan, although the final version, the Mark V, which was produced after the threat of invasion had died down, was produced to a higher standard. The Sten has been described as, highly unreliable, prone to jamming, and inaccurate beyond 30 meters. It was unsuitable for guerrilla operations in open country because it encouraged waste of ammunition. But it was easy and cheap to produce a gun was said to cost 15 shillings, three quarters of a pound, and was supplied to the, French, resistance in huge quantities. The Sten underwent various design improvements over the course of the war. For example, the Mark IV cocking handle and corresponding hole drilled in the receiver were created to lock the bolt in the closed position to reduce the likelihood of accidental discharges inherent in the design. Most changes to the production process were more subtle, designed to give greater ease of manufacture and increased reliability. Build quality ranged from quite good, Canadian production, to poor, early British production. Sten guns of late 1942 and beyond were, in general, highly effective weapons, though complaints of accidental discharge continued throughout the war. The Sten was replaced by the Sterling submachine gun from 1953 and was gradually withdrawn from British service in the 1960s. The other Commonwealth nations made or adopted their own replacements. Design the Sten was a blowback-operated submachine gun firing from an open bolt with a fixed firing pin on the face of the bolt. This means the bolt remains to the rear when the weapon is cocked, and on pulling the trigger the bolt moves forward under spring pressure, stripping the round from the magazine, chambering it and firing the weapon all in the same movement. There is no breech-locking mechanism, 
the rearward movement of the bolt caused by the recoil impulse is arrested only by the mainspring and the bolt's inertia. The basic operating principles were similar to those of the German MP40, Russian PPSH-41, USM-3 submachine gun and numerous other designs. These shared similar attributes and faults, they were simple and cheap to manufacture, and put an automatic weapon into the hands of soldiers, greatly increasing the short-range firepower of the infantry, especially when the main infantry weapon was a bolt-action rifle capable of only around 15 rounds per minute and not suited for short-range combat. However, the open bolt firing and use of pistol ammunition severely restricted accuracy, with an effective range of around 100 m. Stoppages could occur due to a variety of problems, some as a result of poor maintenance, while others were particular to the Sten carbon buildup on the face of the breech or debris in the bolt raceway could cause a failure to fire, while a dirty chamber could cause a failure to feed. Firing the Sten by grasping the magazine with the supporting hand tended to wear the magazine catch altering the angle of feed and causing a failure to feed, the correct method of holding the weapon was as with a rifle, the left hand cradling the four-piece, as per the picture of Winston Churchill firing one below. Additional problems stemmed from the Sten's magazine, which was a direct copy of the one used in the German MP38, originally in order to facilitate the use of German 9mm magazines. Unfortunately, this decision necessarily incorporated the Irma magazine's faults in the process. The magazine had two columns of 9mm cartridges in a staggered arrangement, merging at the top to form a single column. While other staggered magazines, such as the Thompson, fed from both the left and right side alternately, double column, double feed, the Sten magazine, like the MP38, required the cartridges to gradually merge at the top of the magazine to form a single column, double column, single feed. As a consequence, any dirt or foreign matter in this taper area could cause feed malfunctions. Additionally, the walls of the magazine lip had to endure the full stresses of the rounds being pushed in by the spring. This, along with rough handling could result in deformation of the magazine lips, which required a precise 8 degrees feed angle to operate resulting in misfeeding and a failure to fire. Modern 9mm magazines, such as those used by the Sterling SMG, are curved and feed both sides to avoid this problem. If a Sten failed to feed due to jammed cartridges in the magazine, standard practice to clear it was as follows, remove magazine from Sten, tap the base of the magazine against the knee, reinsert magazine in Sten, then recocking the weapon and firing again as normal. To facilitate easier loading when attempting to push the cartridges down to insert the next one, a magazine filler tool was developed and formed part of the weapons kit. The slot on the side of the body where the cocking knob ran was also a target of criticism, as the long opening could allow foreign objects to enter. On the other hand, a beneficial side effect of the Sten's minimalist design was that it would fire without any lubrication. This proved useful in desert environments such as the Western Desert Campaign, where oil attracted and retained dust and sand. The open bolt design combined with cheap manufacture and rudimentary safety devices also meant the weapon was prone to accidental discharges, which proved hazardous. A simple safety could be engaged while the bolt was in the rearwards, cocked, position. However, if a Sten with a loaded magazine, with the bolt in the closed position, was dropped or the butt was knocked against the ground, the bolt could move far enough rearward to pick up a round, but not far enough to be engaged by the trigger mechanism, and the spring pressure could be enough to chamber and fire the round. The MK4 cocking handle was designed to prevent this by enabling the bolt to be locked in its forward position, thereby immobilizing it. Wear and manufacturing tolerances could render these safety devices ineffective. Variants Sten guns were produced in several basic marks, though the MKI saw limited service, and the MK4 was never issued, and nearly half of the total produced were Mark II versions. Approximately 4.5 million Stens were produced during the Second World War. Mark I The first ever MKI Sten gun, number T40-1 indicating its originator Harold Turpin, the year 1940 and the serial number 1 was handmade by Turpin at the Philips Radio Works at Parivali, 
Middlesex during December 1940 January 1941. This particular weapon is held by the Historical Weapons Collection of the British Army's Infantry and Small Arms School Corps in Warminster, Wiltshire. The first model had a conical flash hider and fine finish. It had a wooden foregrip and forward handle, sometimes this was made of steel, as well for a section of the stock. The stock was a small tube outline, rather like the Mark II Canadian. One unique feature was that the front pistol grip could be rotated forward to make the firearm easier to stow. The barrel sleeve extended all the way to the end, where it met the flash hider. Along the top of the tube surrounding the barrel was a line of small holes and its sights were configured somewhat differently. About 100,000 were made before production switched to the Mark II. Sten MKIs in German possession were designated MP748, E, the E standing for English-ish. Mark the first asterisk. This was the first simplification of the MKI. The foregrip, the wooden furniture and the flash hider were removed for production expediency. Mark II. The Mark II was the most common variant, with 2 million units produced. It was a much rougher weapon than the MKI. The flash eliminator and the folding handle, the grip, of the MKI were eliminated. A removable barrel was now provided which projected 3 inches, 76 mm, beyond the barrel sleeve. Also, a special catch allowed the magazine to be slid partly out of the magazine housing and the housing rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise, from the operator's perspective, together covering the ejection opening and allowing the weapon and magazine both to lie flat on its side. The barrel sleeve was shorter and rather than having small holes on the top, it had three sets of three holes equally spaced on the shroud. To allow a soldier to hold a sten by the hot barrel sleeve with the supporting hand, an insulating lace on leather sleeve guard was sometimes issued. Sten MK2s in German possession were designated MP749, E, the E signifying English-ish. Some MKIIS were fitted with a wooden stock as this part was desirable and interchangeable with the MKV. Also, the SPZKR assault rifle uses the receiver and components from the Sten MK2. Regular Mark II. Overall length, 762 mm, 30.0 in. Barrel length, 197 mm, 7.8 in. Weight, 3.2 kg, 7.1 pounds. Mark II, Canadian. During World War II a version of the Sten gun was produced at the Long Branch Arsenal in Long Branch, Ontario now part of Toronto, Ontario. This was very similar to the regular Mark II, with a different stock, skeleton type instead of strut type, and improved quality of manufacture. It was first used in combat in the Dieppe Raid in 1942. Mark II Overall length, 896 mm, 35.3 in. Barrel length, 198 mm, 7.8 in. Weight, 3.8 kg, 8.4 pounds. Mark III. This simple design was the next most commonly produced after the Mark II. A result of the manufacturer Lines Brothers Ltd stating it could build a modified design that was quicker and cheaper to build than the MK2. It was a simplification of the MKI made both in Canada and the UK. Lines Brothers LTD was the largest manufacturer. The biggest difference from the Mark II was the unification of the receiver, ejection port and barrel shroud that now extended farther up the barrel. The barrel was fixed and the body was welded shut along the center of the top. Captured Sten MKIIIs in German possession were designated MP750, E. Mark V. Introduced in 1944, the MKV was essentially a better quality, more elaborate version of the MK2. Changes included a wooden pistol grip, a vertical wooden foregrip, a wooden stock, and a bayonet mount. There was a NO4 Lee Enfield foresight and the weapon was of better quality manufacture and finish than the MK2 and MK3. The Sten Bandelier issued to paratroopers held seven full magazines. Another variant of the MKV had a swivel stock and rear sight mirror intended for firing around corners in urban warfare, similar to the Krumlauf developed by the Germans for the STG-44. Mark VI 
See suppressed models. Overall length, 908 mm, 35.7 in. Barrel length, 198 mm, 7.8 in. Weight, 4.5 kg, 9.9 pounds. Suppressed models. MKIIS and MK6 models incorporated an integral suppressor, silencer, and had a lower muzzle velocity than the others due to a ported barrel intended to reduce velocity to below the speed of sound, 305 m s 1001 foot s The suppressor would heat up rapidly when the weapon was fired and a canvas cover was laced around the suppressor for some protection for the firer's supporting hand. MKIIS The MKIIS was, as the name suggests, a suppressed version of the MK2. Captured examples of the Sten MKIIS in German service were designated MP751, E. MK6. The MK6, or 6, was a suppressed version of the MKV. The MK6 was the heaviest version due to the added weight of the suppressor, as well as using a wooden pistol grip and wooden stock. The suppressed models were produced at the request of the Special Operations Executive, so, for use on clandestine operations in occupied Europe, starting with the MKIIS in 1943. Owing to their tendency to overheat, they were fired in short bursts or single shots. In addition to its use in the European theatre, the MKIIS saw service with clandestine units in the Southwest Pacific Area, SWPA, such as the Services Reconnaissance Department and SOS Force 136 on operations against Imperial Japanese forces. The Sten MKIIS was used by the Operation JWIC Party during their raid into Japanese-occupied Singapore Harbour. The Sten MKIIS also saw service with the Australian Special Air Service, SAS, in Vietnam. Experimental Models Mark II, Wooden Butt Model This was a standard Sten MK.2 submachine gun with a wooden butt attached in place of the wireframe steel butt used with MK.IIS. This wooden butt model was never put in service, likely due to the cost of producing it. Mark II, r a s i z u s k i Model This was a Sten MK.2 modified by Antoni r a s i z u s k i of Small Arms Ltd. The magazine was mechanically operated by the breech block movement. The trigger was split into two sections, with the upper part of the trigger offering full auto fire and a lower part offering single shots. It was very complex in design and never fielded. Mark II, Pistol Grip Model This was a Sten MK.2 with a wireframe pistol grip. intended for use with paratroopers. It was compact but predictably uncomfortable to fire. Model T42 This was a Sten MK.2 modified with a 5-inch barrel and folding stock, as well as a conventional pistol grip and redesigned trigger guard. It was dubbed the T42 in prototype phases, but never entered service. Mark III, Wooden Model This was a Sten MK.3 with a Lanchester-type wooden body and butt. and bayonet fittings. Sling swivels were also added. It never entered service due to the costs associated with producing it. Mark III, Wooden Model II This was a Sten MK.3 entirely encased in a wooden body, with the only external metal parts being the trigger, barrel, magazine, and cocking handle. The trigger and pistol grip were in line with the magazine. The reasons for its creation are likely an experiment into increasing the comfort and handling of the weapon in freezing temperatures. Mark IV The Mark IV was a smaller version which did not progress beyond the prototype stage. It was near pistol-sized and it had a different configuration with a conical flash hider, a rear pistol grip, a very light stock and a much shorter barrel. Rothstein Developed at the Royal Ordnance Factory at f a y z a k e r l e e ROF The Rothstein was an odd Sten prototype with a redesigned magazine feed, ergonomic pistol grip, selector switch and cocking system. The weapon was cocked by pulling the small ring above the stock. A large flash eliminator was fixed onto the barrel, and a number 5 bayonet could be fixed. It was made to a very high quality standard and had an increased rate of fire, around 900 rounds per minute. The Rothstein was made in 1944 as a single prototype and ROF wanted to submit it to trials the next year. 
Despite better quality there were numerous reliability problems due to the much higher rate of fire. The budget cuts prevented the modifications and this version never got beyond the prototype stage. Foreign built variants and post-1945 derivatives. Argentine Sten. MKIIS and MK6 models incorporated an integral suppressor, silencer, and had a lower muzzle velocity than the others due to a ported barrel intended to reduce velocity to below the speed of sound, 305 m s 1001 foot s The suppressor would heat up rapidly when the weapon was fired and a canvas cover was laced around the suppressor for some protection for the firer's supporting hand. MKIIS The MKIIS was, as the name suggests, a suppressed version of the MK2. Captured examples of the Sten MKIIS in German service were designated MP751, E. MK6. The MK6, or 6, was a suppressed version of the MKV. The MK6 was the heaviest version due to the added weight of the suppressor, as well as using a wooden pistol grip and wooden stock. The suppressed models were produced at the request of the Special Operations Executive, so, for use on clandestine operations in occupied Europe, starting with the MKIIS in 1943. Owing to their tendency to overheat, they were fired in short bursts or single shots. In addition to its use in the European theatre, the MKIIS saw service with clandestine units in the Southwest Pacific Area, SWPA, such as the Services Reconnaissance Department and SOS Force 136 on operations against Imperial Japanese forces. The Sten MKIIS was used by the Operation JWIC Party during their raid into Japanese-occupied Singapore Harbour. The Sten MKIIS also saw service with the Australian Special Air Service, SAS, in Vietnam. Experimental Models Mark II, Wooden Butt Model This was a standard Sten MK.2 submachine gun with a wooden butt attached in place of the wireframe steel butt used with MK.IIS. This wooden butt model was never put in service, likely due to the cost of producing it. Mark II, r a s i z u s k i Model This was a Sten MK.2 modified by Antoni r a s i z u s k i of Small Arms Ltd. The magazine was mechanically operated by the breech block movement. The trigger was split into two sections. with the upper part of the trigger offering full auto fire and a lower part offering single shots. It was very complex in design and never fielded. Mark II, Pistol Grip Model This was a Sten MK.2 with a wireframe pistol grip, intended for use with paratroopers. It was compact but predictably uncomfortable to fire. Model T42 This was a Sten MK.2 modified with a 5-inch barrel and folding stock. as well as a conventional pistol grip and redesigned trigger guard. It was dubbed the T-42 in prototype phases, but never entered service. Mark III, Wooden Model This was a Sten MK.3 with a Lanchester-type wooden body and butt, and bayonet fittings. Sling swivels were also added. It never entered service due to the costs associated with producing it. Mark III, Wooden Model II This was a Sten MK.3 entirely encased in a wooden body, with the only external metal parts being the trigger, barrel, magazine, and cocking handle. The trigger and pistol grip were in line with the magazine. The reasons for its creation are likely an experiment into increasing the comfort and handling of the weapon in freezing temperatures. Mark IV The Mark IV was a smaller version which did not progress beyond the prototype stage. It was near pistol-sized and it had a different configuration with a conical flash hider, a rear pistol grip, a very light stock and a much shorter barrel. r o f s t e n Developed at the Royal Ordnance Factory at f a y z a k e r l e e ROF, the r o f s t e n was an odd Sten prototype with a redesigned magazine feed, ergonomic pistol grip, selector switch and cocking system. The weapon was cocked by pulling the small ring above the stock. A large flash eliminator was fixed onto the barrel, and a number 5 bayonet could be fixed. It was made to a very high quality standard and had an increased rate of fire, around 900 rounds per minute. The r o f s t e n was made in 1944 as a single prototype and ROF wanted to submit it to trials the next year. 
despite better quality there were numerous reliability problems due to the much higher rate of fire. The budget cuts prevented the modifications and this version never got beyond the prototype stage. Foreign built variants and post-1945 derivatives. Argentine Sten The Polish resistance was provided with numerous stents of various models by the SO and the Sikosium Ni. Between 1942 and 1944, approximately 11,000 Sten MKIIS were delivered to the Army Akraja Wa. Due to the simplicity of design, local production of Sten variants was started in at least 23 underground workshops in Poland. Some of them produced copies of Mark IIS, while others produced the so-called Polski Sten and KISS. The Polski Stens made in Warsaw under the command of Rizard by Olostocki were built from a number of legal elements made in official factories or acquired through other means. The main body of the machine pistol was made from hydraulic cylinders produced for hospital equipment. All the machine pistols were marked in English to disguise their origin. Stens barrels were also used for SMGs produced in Poland under the name Bliskoika. Belgian Sten MKII A little-known version of the MKII Sten was built in Belgium by El Arsenal Militaire Belga, the Belgian military arsenal. The magazine well was stamped as ARM, the manufacturer, ABL, for Army Belgi Belgis Ledger, the Belgian royal crown and a serial number of typically five-figure with no letter prefix. It is believed the Belgian-built MK2 Stens remained in ABL service until the early 1980s, particularly with helicopter-borne forces. Some of the weapons had a Park Air East finish. Gerard Potsdam In late 1944, the Mauser Works in Germany secretly started manufacturing copies of the MK2 Sten, apparently for deception and sabotage purposes. These weapons were intended to duplicate the British original as closely as possible, including the markings. The series was referred to as the Gerat Potsdam, Potsdam device, and approximately 28,000 weapons were made even though the Germans had ample stocks of captured original stens available. The intended purpose of these copies is now uncertain. German MP3008 Late in the war Germany was seeking a cheap version of the MP40 machine pistol for the Volkssturm. For that purpose a modified Sten was designed by Mauser and named the MP3008. The main difference was the magazine attached below the weapon. Altogether, roughly 10,000 were produced in early 1945, just before the end of World War II. Austin MKI The Mark I Austin, from Australian Sten was a 9mm Australian submachine gun derived from the British Sten gun developed during the Second World War by the Lithgow Small Arms Factory. It externally resembled the Sten but had twin pistol grips and folding stock resembling those of the German MP40. A MK2 version was also produced which was of different appearance and which made more use of diecast components. Although 20,000 were made, the Austin never achieved the success of the competing Australian-designed Owen submachine gun, known as the Owen Gun. Imperia Submachine Gun After the Second World War the Belgian army was mainly equipped with a mixture of British and American submachine guns. The army, wanting to replace them with a modern and preferably native design, tested various designs with the Vigneron M2 and license-produced FNUZ being selected. However, the Imperia was an improved Sten with a fire selector and retractable stock. Sputter Gun A short-lived American invention developed in the 1980s, the Sputter Gun was designed to circumvent the law that defined a machine gun as something that fired multiple rounds with one pull of the trigger. The Sputter Gun had no trigger, but fired continuously after loading and the pulling back of its bolt, firing until it ran out of ammunition. The gun was very short-lived as the ATF quickly reclassified it. Halcon ML-57 The Halcon ML-57 was a simpler derivative of the Sten gun of Argentine origin that was fed from a vertically inserted magazine. International Ordnance MP2 During the 1970s to 1980s, International Ordnance of San Antonio, Texas, United States released the MP2 machine pistol. It was intended as a more compact, simpler derivative of the British Sten gun to be used in urban guerrilla actions, 
to be manufactured cheaply and slash or in less than well-equipped workshops and distributed to friendly undercover forces. Much like the FP-45 Liberator pistol of World War II, it could be discarded during an escape with no substantial loss for the force's arsenal. The MP2 is a blowback-operated weapon that fires from an open bolt with an extremely high rate of fire. Cellini Dunn SM9 The SM9 is a machine pistol of Guatemalan origin and manufactured by Cellini Dunn IMG, Military Research Corp and Wildfire Munitions as the SM90. It is blowback-operated, firing from an open bolt and can use magazines from Ingram Mac-10 submachine guns inserted into a similar foregrip that can be rotated 45 and 90 degrees for left-slash-right-handed operators. The layout of the receiver is somewhat simpler than that of a Sten with its internal components light and weight enabling a very high rate of fire of 1200 RPM. Its forward pistol grip can hold a spare magazine as well as handling the weapon when firing. Pletter 91 The Pletter submachine gun was created in 1991 when the breakup of Yugoslavia in the midst of emerging war left the newly formed Republic of Croatia with small number of military firearms. Since the embargo prevented the Croatian military from legally buying them on open market, so they were mostly obtained on the world black market, but with significantly higher price and sometimes of questionable quality, to fulfill the immediate need for arms, they tried to resort on quick and simple locally made designs. Despite having a vertical magazine well, designed to accept 32 round double feed direct copy of UZ magazine, rather than original single feed Sten type magazine, Analogies with the Sten include a striking resemblance in the barrel assembly and in the bolt and recoil spring. In addition, this gun also fires from an open bolt, and is further simplified by removing fire mode selector or any safety. SASK Sten SMG International in Canada manufactured reproductions of the Sten in six variants. They made copies of the Sten's MK1, MK2, and MK3, a New Zealand Sten. A MK2-3 Sten hybrid, with sights and a fixed magazine housing similar to the MK3, then branched out into hypothetical Sten guns with a rotary magazine Sten, a MK2 Sten with a drum magazine attached below the weapon and wooden horizontal forward grip on the left side of the weapon, and the FRT gun, a long barrel Sten with a wooden or MK1 type butt stock, a drum magazine attached below the weapon end. Sliding Ramp Rear Sights these last two being obviously not Sten reproductions, especially if they included a drum magazine. The rotary magazine Sten is a vertically fed Sten which uses a modified Sten bolt, which can use either PPSH drum magazines or stick magazines. The FRT gun is essentially a Suomi that uses a Sten trigger mechanism. All SASK Sten guns fire from an open bolt. Service The Sten, especially the Mark II, tended to attract affection and loathing in equal measure. Its peculiar appearance when compared to other firearms of the era, combined with sometimes questionable reliability made it unpopular with some frontline troops. It gained nicknames such as Plumber's Nightmare, Plumber's Abortion, or Stench Gun. The Sten's advantage was its ease of mass production manufacture in a time of shortage during a major conflict. Made by a variety of manufacturers, Often with subcontracted parts, some early Sten guns were made poorly and slash or not made to specification, and could malfunction in operation, sometimes in combat. The double column, single feed magazine copied from the German MP28 was never completely satisfactory, and hasty manufacturing processes often exacerbated misfeed problems inherent in the design. A common statement heard from British forces at the time was that the Sten was made by Marks and Spencer out of Woolworth. British and Commonwealth forces in the early years of the war often extensive. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.